Hello and welcome back. So in the previous video we learned about probabilities and expectations taken with respect to the empirical distribution and these will be the basic building blocks for bootstrap estimates. So when I explain this what I want to start with is I want to compare these empirical quantities to the usual probabilistic expression. The first thing we introduced was the empirical distribution and the random variable distributed according to the empirical distribution here we denoted by x star typically. And then we had the empirical probabilities or the probability that x star is in a conditioned on the values of x and that is 1 over m sum j from 1 to m indicate a function of a x j we saw this and the conditional expectation similarly is 1 over m sum j from 1 to m f of x j and I don't think I have written the formula for the conditional variance before but we know that is the expectation of f of x squared minus the expectation of f of x and the result squared and what we can do is we can just plug in this formula twice so we get that is 1 over m sum j from 1 to m f of x j squared minus 1 over m sum j from 1 to m f of x j and the result squared. So these were the empirical quantities. And let me just contrast this with the usual quantities. So usually we have x which is distributed according to some distribution and then we have probability of x in a which is something to do with the distribution of x and the expectation of f of x can for example be written as some integral and the variance of f of x again can be expressed in terms of expectations. One practical difference between these two columns is that everything on the left hand side we can compute if we know our observations x1 up to xm. So we assumed we have observed x1 up to xm and normally then once it's data and numbers in your spreadsheet you, you may work little x1 up to little xm, it does really not matter here. But the point is everything on the left hand side we can evaluate if we know these xj's. So this probability for example according to the empirical distribution that is this average and if we plug in our given data we can work that out, there is nothing unknown left. Similarly here if we know f then we can work this out, we don't need any knowledge about x except for the data and this expression here again is just a function of the xj and the empirical distribution we learned is just pick one of the list at random so we can even generate the x star just knowing this. In contrast, if we want to work out any of these or generate samples x, we will need to know the distribution of x. So we can do none of these in our setting where we assume we don't know the distribution of x, but we can do all of these. And the idea of a bootstrap estimate is now to use the left hand side as approximations to the right hand side. We know already a bit about this and we can kind of see that makes sense, namely when we talked about Monte Carlo estimation of probabilities, this here was our formula for the Monte Carlo estimate of that probability. So we know this will be close to that. Similarly, we know from Monte Carlo estimation of expectations, that expression here will be close to that expectation and then in the last row that is just using the rule for expectations twice so that then also must be close. So we know each of these quantities in the left hand column is close to the corresponding quantity in the right hand column. And we don't know enough probability to express this but in a sense you can also argue if you generate samples from the empirical distribution then their behavior will be close to samples from the true distribution. So to turn that into an exact statement we would need to know measures for the distance between distributions. We don't have this so we can't do that formally but this x star will be not entirely dissimilar from this x. So we can approximate everything here by the corresponding quantity here. And this leads me to what's called the bootstrap principle and this says the bootstrap estimate for a statistical quantity is obtained by making the following substitutions. First, if x 
is a random variable, we replace it with x stars. And if we have IID copies, so x1, x2, and so on, that is IID copies of x, these will be replaced with independent samples from the empirical distribution. And then every occurrence of p will be replaced with p x star, and I write that separately, but that is really a special case of this. If we have an expectation, then that expectation is really with respect to some probability measure, normally that would be p. So if we follow the p is replaced with p x star rule, then we would need to write the expectation with respect to the empirical distribution, and that turns out to just be the thing we called e x star. So these are the substitutions which give you a bootstrap estimate. And I will show you a very simple example to show you the basics of this. So we assume we have x1 up to xn iid, and they can take only two values. So xi is 1 with probability p, and xi is 0 with probability 1 minus p, and we want to estimate p. So that's right, p is unknown. And now in the situation where we can apply bootstrap estimation, we need to have data. So assume we have observed values, say for x1, we observed little x1, and so on up to xn, we observed little xn. So that is just n numbers which are either 0 or 1. And since I said we don't know p, we do not know the distribution of the xi, because that's specified using p. So we could, for example, not generate samples from the xi to estimate p, because, well, we don't know p. And let's just pretend we don't know how to estimate p from these values. So let's follow the recipe instead from the previous page. So how would we get p? So the bootstrap estimate would be little p is the probability of the xi, let's just write x for one of them, equals 1. And now if we want our bootstrap estimate for that, we know what to do. We need to replace x with x star. So that is probability that x star equals 1. And this p, certain here, we need to replace with the empirical distribution. So here I write p x star. So that's the probability that under the empirical distribution, x star equals 1. And that we know is written here m is little n, so we just use this formula with little n instead of m, and the set which contains only 1 here. So that is 1 over n sum i from 1 to n indicator function of the set which only contains 1 of the xi. And that is the bootstrap estimate of p. So we could call that p hat star, where hat indicates it's an estimate, and star indicates it is obtained using the bootstrap method. So does this estimate make sense? If you look at it, you see immediately it does, because what we got back here is just our Monte Carlo estimate for p using the observed values as data. So different from normal Monte Carlo, we can now not go ahead and generate lots of values to get a better and better estimate of p. We just have to do with what we were given as data, but this looks like the standard way of estimating p. So in this case, we get a reasonable answer. To conclude this video, I want to show you another example which allows us to understand one final complication with this method. Let's first do the example. So we want to estimate the expectation of a function of several random variables, say x1 up to xn. Let's assume here x1 to xn are iid. And well, we know what to do. So bootstrap estimate is the expectation with respect to the empirical distribution. And then x1 up to xn are replaced with x1 star up to xn star. And since the original x were independent, we have to choose the x star also independently. So we do x1 star up to xn star are from the empirical distribution of x. And I haven't written this. That only works if we have some data. So assume x is x1. I can write m here is a sample of independent observations of x. I didn't write that, but I said this x is another random variable which has the same distribution as x1 up to xn. 
I can write this by writing IID copies of X. Okay, so that would be the setting. And so if we want to work out that expectation and X1 to Xn are IID copies of X, then we need data, but the amount of data we have, I wrote M here, is not necessarily the same as the number of arguments of F. It often is, but it's not required. We just assume we have observed M independent observations from X. And then if we follow the rule, we learn this expectation we are interested in can be approximated by using that expectation, which only depends on data. And it only depends on data because the x1 star up to xn star, they are taken from the empirical distribution of our data. So we know the distribution here and we can work this out in principle. So the complication I want to tell you about is that even when we can work out the expectation here in principle, often that's difficult and sometimes there's just no closed form expression. So often the expectation on the right hand side of this equation, which I just called star, is difficult to evaluate. And even while we could do so in theory, because again we know the distribution of x1 star to xn star, so there is no lack of knowledge, it is still the matter of solving the required integrals or so. But there is no problem here because we know how to approximate expectations which we can't work out analytically. If we just think back to what we learned at the start of the module, we know what to do. We can use a Monte Carlo estimate here. So let me just write this down. That leads to what is commonly used for bootstrap estimates. So we can approximate this expectation using Monte Carlo. And then we get this two-step approximation f of x, x1, xn is approximately equal to the expectation with respect to the empirical distribution of a bootstrap sample, so x1 star up to xn star. And that in turn, now comes the Monte Carlo estimation, is approximately equal to 1 over n, sum j from 1 to n, f of, and now we need to be a bit careful with notation, we need many copies of this tuple x1 star to xn star, one for every j. So we need to write x1 star j maybe up to xn star j. And I said this, that is many copies of this tuple, and the tuple we said was made of independent random variables from the empirical distribution. So we have x, i, star, j are all samples from the empirical distribution. They are independent, i ranges from 1 to n. That is for to enumerate the arguments here. And j ranges from 1 to capital N. That is for the Monte Carlo estimate. So now we have two approximations. And as I said, that's a typical problem. So you often end up with expectations which are hard to evaluate analytically, even if you could do it in theory. And then the standard approach is you pop a Monte Carlo estimate at the end. So what we end up with now is an estimate which requires less knowledge about x, because we can work that out without knowing the distribution of x, just based on data. But the price is we have larger error than for Monte Carlo estimation, because here we have the Monte Carlo error we know, but there is another lot of error here, which is on top of that. So we need less knowledge, we have larger error. So let me discuss the error a bit. We have first this error here, that is Monte Carlo error. And that we know, I write it here in very simplified way, that is small for n going to infinity. We know how to assess this error and we know how to reduce this error. We can choose n. n is not part of the problem. There is no n on the left hand side and no n here. So this n we get to pick and we can just pick this large enough that this error is negligible. So we don't really need to worry about that. Then there is this error here that is called the bootstrap error. And this is analytically difficult, so we are not going to prove any results about that. But you can guess that gets smaller if you have more data. That makes sense. So it's small for m going to infinity. So the larger m is, the smaller that error will become. But again, quantifying that error is a difficult problem. And it is also not so useful in practice because the answers will depend on the distribution of x 
and we don't know that so we have little chance of actually assessing the error in practice even if we have a formula. So let's not worry about this here and just note the fact that gets small when n goes to infinity. And that looks now relatively symmetric but actually these errors are very different in character. Namely this one here we control the n so we can make it as small as we want to and we learned how to assess this error so we even have ways of knowing how small it is. So we can know how much error we accumulate here and also we can make it smaller if it's too much. In contrast that is different. This error first would get smaller if m gets large but m is the amount of given data so normally we cannot change this. Normally you get your data and have to work with this so normally m is fixed and you cannot reduce this error by increasing m and then Secondly, we don't know how to assess this error, so we just have to hope for the best here. There is no easy way to quantify this error and get some numbers and say that is within this many percent of that or anything like this. So with this error both we cannot make it small and also it is not easy to assess how large this is. So that is the disadvantage of bootstrap methods. The advantage is you can use them every time you have data. The disadvantage is the second error here where you don't always have a good sense of how large this may be. Okay, this is the end of this video. In the next video we will do a more extensive example where we see the whole machinery in action.